All right, we should get going. Uh, well, thank you all for joining us. Um, really excited to be in conversation. Uh, you know, the the goal of this webinar is to uh, you know talk to some of the industry leaders in the space that you know you, you a lot of you guys know really well. Uh, a bit about what makes their businesses tick, uh, and you know, some, hopefully, it's a conversation that you know folks can get something away from. Uh, I'll talk a bit about the structure. You know, we just introduce the speakers. Uh, we'll talk a bit about Spot AI, Camel Express, and Sudzi Salmon. And we're going to be touching on three or four themes uh, in the webinar. Uh, one is, you know, the role of mission vision uh, um, in, in, in terms of motivating a team and, you know, getting excellence, uh, building and training teams for success, uh, building brands, uh, and leveraging technology to, uh, you know, improve how, how, how car washes operate. Um, so without further ado, uh, to introduce myself, uh, I'm Surd. I am one of the co-founders of Spot, uh, and I have with me uh, Tyler, John, and Jason. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, if you wouldn't mind giving us a quick introduction about yourselves for the folks who may not know. Yeah, I'll get started. This is some furthest on the left. Uh, I'm Tyler Slaughter. I'm the COO for Camel Express Car Wash in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, I'm glad everybody's here. Awesome. Welcome, Tyler. Thank you. Yeah, I'm John Sproul. I'm the hiring and training director uh, here with Camel Express, I'm also in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, I'm not having fun like Tyler is not in Nashville right now. So, <laughs> Welcome, John. I'm Jason Woodward, owner-operator of Southeast Salmon Car Wash up in Alaska, and I am in Alaska right now. Thank you for joining us, Jason. Excited to be talking. Jason, are you freezing yet? It's cold. We got a bunch of snow last night, so it's not too cold, but it's supposed to start getting cold again. <laughs> I know. My my challenges this morning where we got a foot and a half of snow last night and the plows haven't showed up yet. So but we're open. <laughs> That's great to hear. That's awesome. Um you know, and for the for the folks on the on the call who uh may or have heard a bit about Spot AI and are curious a bit about you know what we do. So uh, you know, the company was started off by uh, by me and two of my co-founders with the idea that video security was up for a change. Uh, you know, video security was built nearly 50 years ago as a category and was built to review break-ins every few months. Uh, you know, it's not very easy to use. It's very unreliable. Uh, it's very outdated in terms of software. But, you know, the vision that we saw... Uh, for the company and, 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 and for the market was uh, businesses using video every day to manage their operations. Uh, and in, you know, in doing so, we fundamentally reinvented the model around a camera system and we reinvented the product. Uh, so it's really, really easy to use. It has a lot of AI built in to help you to improve your operations. And it's super easy to set up and to maintain. Um, and we call that new category of products video intelligence. And you know, a lot of what we'll be talking about today is how uh, you know, Tyler, John, and Jason uh, use video intelligence to actually, you know, improve their operations and, you know, manage their businesses on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, jumping in, uh, uh, you know, we've obviously spent a lot of time working with uh, folks in the car wash industry and, you know, we're really excited to count Tyler and Jason as, uh, as, as some of our customers. Uh, and, you know, we've been uh, really building out our capabilities with the specific intent of serving the needs of this industry uh, as best as we can. Um, and, you know, the, you know, Tyler and Jason and John can talk a bit about some of the use cases that we have there. So, uh, Tyler, maybe uh, would love to hear a bit about Camel Express and, you know, uh, your history as a company and your vision. for the future. Yeah. Um, so we currently have three sites open in Nashville, Tennessee. We got a handful more in the works. Um, the last, uh, we got started in 2016. It started actually a year before I come on board. Reed Howe was the founder. Uh, he's the one who created Camel. Um, and he brought me on to help run the operations side of it as a operator and a partner. Um, we're extremely focused on the overall customer experience and internally the employee experience. Um, one of our biggest keys to our success is um, treating our employees like family. Um, that, that served us really well um, and helped us grow to where we are today to where, you know, we like to say we we lead the industry and part of when it comes to the part of uh, employee satisfaction, customer experience, that's stuff we focus really hard on. 
Well, that's awesome. I mean, that, that that makes a lot of sense, and that sort of reflects in you know how the business operates. That it's all about the team at the end of the day. So, you know, thank you. It is. You're right. For joining us. Uh, You're welcome. Jason, uh, would love to hear a bit about Sajid Salmon. Yeah, for sure. We're kind of the same place. Uh, we have three sites open. We're working on a fourth one. It broke ground. Uh, well, not too long ago, really. Should open this summer. Um, we also focus huge on the customer experience side of the house. And I think that's led by a good employee experience. So if employees are happy, smiling, and enjoying their work, then that seems to also lead to the customers feeling the same way. Um, I would say we love, we've gone to visit Tyler's group when we were in Nashville last week. So I would agree they're leading the charge on that and doing awesome stuff. And we love to go out there and copy and grow from them. And I hope some people are doing the same with us. So I think it leads to it. One thing that's interesting in this industry, I think right now is the number of Gen Z people that we hire and managing them is a fun challenge. And I think Spot AI has created some more fun in that. Um, with the way we can do some of the AI stuff, and, um, the, the cameras being fairly easy to use. So, uh, I hate when you get to camera systems. I, I, I always have said I don't want the camera system to be managed, cool, but at the same time, you're not inspecting your expectations. Um, they really do come in handy for that. And um, when you're starting to have to use the cameras to manage the people, then you know maybe you don't have the right people always either. So. Well, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, thank you again for joining us. And, you know, that both those themes, right, you know, both of you touched upon something that's really important, right, which is that uh, it's all about the, it's all about the teams. And one thing that, you know, we noticed with both your companies is, you know, you're very mission and vision driven, right? Uh, and then that kind of comes out in, you know, how you articulate it and, you know, and how you, how you manage it on your business. I'd love to hear a bit from, you know, both of you on, uh, you know, what was your thought process around around building these this sort of vision, mission, and values? Uh, and then, you know, how do you actually, you know, hire and motivate a team around that? Sorry, I'm trying to unmute my microphone here. Uh, I'm getting back in messages because I'm sitting in the middle of a mall somewhere and telling to mute my mic. Uh, yeah, so for us, we spent... Um, the better part of a year going back and forth with some professional development coaches, um, trying to figure out who we were as a company. Um, and through a lot of meetings, um, we took what was, a, what was all these ideas and things that we had on this board and uh, we shrunk it down to the things that truly mattered and you know, how we were gonna run the company, which is our vision, mission, and values, which for us is our organizational identity. Um, and when you, when you look over the vision to create a culture that inspires people to make positive impacts on their lives in our communities. Um, part of that was, you know, we wanted to inspire people to do the right thing. We wanted to inspire people to, uh, you know, be good to others. When I when I come on board, read it. When I come on board with Camel, read it. Wrote something on my board in the office, and it's it's always do good for people. And I still have that till today. And in my house, it's still wrote on my still wrote on my board, in my office. Um, and then the mission, which is to deliver the greatest car wash experience every single time. Uh, we can't do that without the employees. Uh, and they're actually, like Jason said, a big part of that. Um, the, the only way we can hold up our part of that mission is to have great people that do it. And then, um, believe it or not, the values come from the employees. Uh, Reed had created all these values for the company uh, you know, a few years back, and uh, we just took a hard look at it and noticed that it wasn't – the people in our company didn't fill all of those uh, – so when we surveyed the employees, a lot of the employees felt, you know, like the business was safe, it was a safe place to work at, it was a safe place to, you know, let loose, it was a safe place to just be you. Uh, we really cared about them through a lot of the things that we do with, you know, benefits, um, just generally showing up for them. And then we always have a lot of fun. And those are three values that come from the employee. And John will have to get into the, that here on the next slide, John will get into the part with hiring and stuff. Uh, I'll leave that up to him. But uh, you know, these things are how we choose to run the company and to serve as well. I think you want me to go on, John, or you can go next? Uh, yeah, no, I just, just to add on with Tyler, I think is the core is, is that um, out of, I think what he's just hitting on is that we are always listening and have our ears to our employees and we are making these changes like these came from our employees. And I think that's, that's the making them feel heard. And like knowing that like 
safe and fun and like caring like that, that came from what our employees, when we pulled them a year and a half ago, when we started this process. And I think that's, that's the core of it is like, what's our purpose Our number one valuable asset is not our equipment is not our, you know, is not our camera system. (laughs) It's our, it's our people. Like they are the number one and everything that we have and do needs to be reinforcing that. And that starts with our vision, mission values. Yeah, I think that's good summary. Um, you can see on ours on the left there, it's, it started for with all customer base for us. So, you know, our mission is very similar, provide a first class experience with an Alaskan touch. It looks a lot like Tyler's. I imagine a lot of people on the webinar are fairly similar when it comes to the mission vision side, you start really driving into the employees and what they are. And I, I'd argue that for our standpoint, we're still constantly developing it. Um, and for me, it's, it's been interesting because getting back to the Gen Z side, I, I have like 80 employees right now and they're all under the age of 22 and we only have three sites, but a lot of that's because of the flex work environment. Like my requirement to man the site might be four or five people, but I need 20 to fill that um, based on the flex work environment. So that's constantly being redeveloped and redesigned to where I, I don't know that I could actually put a vision mission values sign on the wall that made sense for us right now. I can definitely do mission and we definitely say our uh, values are, you know, safer, uh, more fun and clean. I think fun is always there. Um, ours again, ours seem to be more customer focused, at least what we say on the front end and on the back end, we live a lot of that, but it does need, we could do a better job writing it out for sure. Um, and then um, back to not talking in circles here, but back to the, the Gen Z side, like it seems to be changing as, as I further develop and get more um, like we just hired our first, well, I say it was 22. We just hired a new guy that's mid thirties right now. So that even brings a new dynamic to the environment of what's important to that. And, and how do we, how do we grow the company? So it's constantly flexing with us. Depends on who's there, I guess. No, that makes a lot of sense. And that really dovetails into uh, the, the the next part of the conversation, right? Is that when you have so many, you know, flex workers um, and, you know, you have a business that's scaling really fast, how do you build and train these, you know, teams to deliver that really world-class customer experience? And John, maybe we'd love to hear a bit from you on, you know, how you do that at Campbell Express. Yeah, I think this is the part where I just be quiet because this is John's wheelhouse. I can tell you, though, that it's a lot of hard work and a lot of just genuine care. Um, you, you don't find many people like, you know, John um, and our regional manager, Aaron, that are truly passionate about making sure people are successful. And I'm very thankful for that. So, John, I'll let you take over. Yeah, I think I think at the core, there's two main things. And we just had a car wash that was visiting us um, these past few days. Um asking about our training and there's two things important i say one is you always have to remember what's your end goal so like what are you trying to do are you trying to build a team that just gets the job done are you trying to build a family-like environment um because if you know what your end goal is then you can build to it so like like exactly like i i want our power our employees to be empowered to be more proactive and excited about work that's that's what I'm striving for. So then what do I need to build for it? What do I need to do for training? And I think any kind of training thing, I always have to remember, like never forget what my first day, not only my first day of work, but my first day at the car wash. And sometimes for some of us, it's the same. Um, Some of us came across car washing just not that long ago. Sometimes it's been a while, like Tyler, it's been a long time. So, (laughs) um, but I think, I think that's just important to remember like that. We don't forget that because some of us have been doing car washing for decades and it's easy to go, Oh, well, they should know this. They should do this. And um, my very first day of car washing was extremely traumatic. And if I wasn't in my late twenties, if I was a teenager, I probably would have just quit. And my goal is I don't ever want that to be somewhat something that like, don't ever want anyone to feel traumatic or overwhelmed when they start their first day at camel. And, and what we try to do, and and we'll talk about this more is like, we try to remove those pain points and like, Hey, is this necessary? Can we make this easier? Is this thing that we're interacting with? Can we make this easier for our employee? um, So they don't have to, 
all like, well, this is the way we do it. And that's, that's just a part of it. And there's so many things and I can literally talk about this for ages and ages. Um, but I think that's. John, I think you said something too earlier on the last slide, you know, we're, we're, we're extremely open-minded. We're always listening. You'd be surprised. Like some of our massive changes in our company have come from frontline employees who said, I just think there's a better way to do this. And we listen, we, we take feedback and we're open to change. And John, you know, building on building on that, right? What are areas that you train folks that you know tend to get overlooked, and what role does video tend to play in in in, in being able to do that effectively? Yeah, we we got to see like one. It has to be easy to access, and we've all been there. Situations where like it shouldn't. If 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 the barrier of entry to be able to use something is difficult, they'll never use it. And so it doesn't matter how awesome a tool is, if like, hey, our training platform is awesome, but it doesn't have an app and you have to only access it on a desktop, well then no one's ever going to use it. So I think, so being able an ease of use with our video is is very important. We have it on our finger, at our fingertips. But I think there's little things like, you know, the intelligence and, and like seeing how fast we're processing things and, and one site that, that really has been sort of maybe they're not the best in their sales and their and their volume has been dropping and they're down on themselves. But when it comes to like their processing speed and how well they take care of the customers through spot and our intelligence, we see that they are three times as fast. Like they are excelling where everyone else is like clogging up the lanes. And we're able to see that and spot that through um uh, through spot. And that's something that's really helpful. And we're able to sit down and going, no, this, this, this site is excelling and it's doing an amazing job and being able to call them. And it's not just, you know, so often you look at uh, either whether it's video or other um, pieces of technology is often looked as like a big brother kind of thing. And it's like, it's not it's also to call out the things that people are doing well in. So. Well, that makes a lot of sense, right? Because it's not just about, what you didn't do well versus what you did well. And you're, you're trying to reinforce those positive behaviors and you know, having a concrete example with video can really help with that. Jason, I don't know if you have anything to add on that. I mean, I know uh, you guys use it a bunch as well. So if there's something that you want to add to this. Yeah, I don't know where to start. I thought we were talking training and now we're into cameras. You guys went on for a while. Um, let me see here. Uh, the camera side, I think my only piece I would add is to reiterate, um, you know, I don't, we don't use the cameras to manage the negative side of the business, but at the same time, it's there to inspect our inspect expectations. And this system has been extremely easy for us to pull up and sort of dial into a specific incident, much more than our previous one. Um, and uh, the ease with which we are able to replace a camera too. So especially as the weather changes up here, uh, we tend to have issues with cameras in the tunnels with cold and changing environments um, in the past. And it's been much more difficult to plug and play. Whereas with the spot system, we really like the, the monthly charge and we've got a couple of cameras on the shelf. And when there's an issue that we can't just clean and fix, we just switch it out. Um, and that's been super easy. It's very plug and play. Um, when it comes to managing the team, um, you know, we're hiring a ton of young people very often. Like it's a very powerful tool to be able to show them, Hey, here's when it was done, right. Here's when it wasn't done as well. Um, you know, track efficiency and throughput, the sites are all different. Some of them we need to slow down and some of them we need to speed up and having that data has been pretty valuable. Um, and then being able to share it really easily, you know, with the click share and text or send is that's been invaluable too, from a quick training standpoint especially when a lot of times your managers are, are having to do that from uh, remote, you know, they're not all at every site all the time. They're able to just log in, see it, shoot it over somebody in a positive way. Um, if you're doing that a lot, it starts to become negative, but um, it, you know, that's part of the system, I think. So. No, that's, that's very interesting to hear. And right? you have to just, you know, train, train and nudge the right, the right amount, right? Yeah. Too much is too bad. Too little is too bad. Um, so shifting gears a bit, uh, one thing that we also noticed about both uh, Camel uh, and Saldi Salmon is uh, you guys create very unique brands. Uh, and, 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 and Jason, you know, you, you guys are also doing really unique things to provide new and valuable services to customers. Um, would love to hear a bit about, you know, how you think through that. 
right? And, you know, what the role of brand plays in getting, you know, folks back to your car wash again and again. Yeah, it's funny. I see some big names on this chat list. Like I saw Sean in there from Waterway. So maybe he should be on here talking about some of this stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, for us up here in Alaska, um, you know, I think we're all chasing the same thing. It's just a little different environments where you're doing it in. And then when it comes back to the brand development side, on the surface at the customer perspective, we're all, you know, cleaner, faster, um, you know, more fun. It seems to be the driving stuff I see at a lot of brands, but at the end of the day, it comes back to getting that right person. Like Tyler was saying with John, for me, it's, you get the right guy in there that can actually manage the team. And that's the difference maker. Um, and if you let them run off and do their own thing and everybody's running their own direction and nobody cares, that's actually a human, not a system. Um, it, it, it tends to not feed the brand you're looking for. Yeah, I think for us, um, our brand is just really fun and friendly. Uh, our brand director, Sarah, um, she's very detailed and she works hard to make sure that from the time you, you see it external, so you see it in marketing, you see it on billboards, you see it in flyers, uh, it translates very well into the site. When you pull up on the site, um, it, it flows real nice from, you know, the signage that you see, the building, the lights on the outside, throughout the tunnel, the vacuum area, the uniforms that our employees wear, um, everything just flows real nice and it's friendly. And um, she, she takes a lot of pride in that. And it, it's really cool, like, um, particularly as most of you know, a brand director, sometimes they take too long. Um, but there's, there's a good reason behind that because, um, especially the good ones are very detailed. Um, and just, just some of the little things that, that she does and some of the little things that go throughout the site, you know, with like the air fresheners for the members and stuff, the, the little things make a big difference. No, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, building on that, right. What is the role of consistency of experience in that? In, in, in the brand that you think? Yeah, um, so uh, John and our regional manager focus really hard on this, um, but uh, with our training, we want the same experience from site to site. So that customer that pulled up at one site was, um, you know, greeted, loaded, facility clean, vacuums work well, they should be able to go to the next site and get the same exact experience. We focus on that really hard. And um, that's actually, you know, we have three core subjects, which is loading, greeting, and lot maintenance. And out of those three, that's something we're real big on is to make sure that that same experience is carried site to site. It doesn't matter that the employee that works at one site should be able to go to the next site and basically repeat the same process. We do the same thing. Uh, Keegan, that, that key experience for the customer, no matter where they go. Um, we have a huge prep requirement up here. So that's our biggest challenge is that uh, you get a car that's a customer car that comes in every day. They don't need the same prep as a car that doesn't come, comes once every four months or whatever. But if you don't prep them and let them go through, they're just as mad as the guy who needs it. So you got to like create that experience and do it efficiently and slow the line down when you need to and speed it up when you need to. And that's been our, our biggest challenge. I would say across sites is getting people that are your shift captains consistently carrying at that level, regardless of, you know, who it is that's coming in. It's easy to be like, oh, we don't need to prep that one. Well, you do because they, they feel like you don't care if you don't try. Yeah, I would say too, Sud, uh, something that we hear a lot from, especially the people that interview with us, and John, correct me if I'm wrong, but the number one reason, the number one reason that people apply with us is because our sites are clean and welcoming. Uh, we hear that time and time again from people as, um, you know, compared to, most of the washes in the areas, you know, our sites are very clean. They're welcoming. They're lit up. They're they're clean. You know, we, we maintain the buildings on the schedule. We clean the vacuum arches on the schedule. We pressure wash lots, lots on the schedule. But, you know, we sell clean. That's part of it. Well, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, I think which sort of segues very well to the next bit, right? You know, we've spoken a lot about the value of consistency of experience, the value of training, uh, you know, a, a younger workforce where you have a lot of, you know, uh, temp and variable workforce. Um, how do, you know, and, and, and Tyler and Jason, how do you think of technology partners and the, you know, key characteristics of a technology that can actually enable you to do uh, all these things at scale? Actually, Tyler, can I? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to let John answer this. My, oh, my, uh, my, my only two cents on it is uh, Reed and I kind of have this uh, internal saying, but we have to feel good about paying our partners. When that check clears the bank every month, uh, we should feel good that we paid them. That's how much value they should bring to us. And Spot's one of those. But I'll let John cover the details. 
Well, like one of the things like, yeah, we ask that question. Another thing is we look at a company and we go like, Hey, we know where we, like what I was saying before with training, we asked the same, we know where we want to go. Is this company going to be able to help us get there? Or is this company going to be able to match us when we're like, Hey, this company's great, but they're not going to be able to help us when we're at this many locations. Well, then maybe we shouldn't start with them now, or maybe we should try to find a replacement and, and like, um, yes, yeah, similar to with training is like, we got to figure out what our end goal is. And I think too, another thing is like, I think the goal of technology, whether it's cameras or anything is that, um, they, they should, ha- they should not be the core of our job. They help us do our job and they should be in the background as much as possible and helping us. But like, I shouldn't have to spend my entire every waking moment is towards this making this piece of technology work it shouldn't be that it should help in my job it shouldn't be my job to make this technology work for us and so i do think that that that's key i think another thing that's really important and i've said this plenty of times is that there isn't things like we have our like equipment and our basic stuff but when it comes to basic technology um except for point of sales it's not made for car washes and like, that's a big pain point is that we have to go out. We all have been there. We have to go out and well, this works, but it's not meant for us, but let's make it work. And I guess specifically, that's one thing that we appreciate about um, Spot is that Spot has come to us and said, hey, we're going to make this stuff for you. And um, if any of you guys have seen that Spot advertising video, I, I, I've said it. I'm like, to us, that makes us spot is saying hey you as a car wash industry you guys matter you we care about you we'll listen to you and that's that's something that you don't hear from technology partners very often in the car wash space it's we're made for this but we're going to help you also as well but instead i feel like when we're talking to spot about stuff our needs and our concerns are the most important things to them and i feel i feel heard so that's what I'm looking for in technology when we scale. Um, let me see what I want to add on to it. So we're a fairly young company. We opened in 2018. Um, I would say our growth pattern has been pretty, pretty aggressive. And so I've focused on technology is obviously important, but obviously we, we do a lot of business process outsourcing type stuff. So accounting, I don't have a brand manager yet. I do that through a company. So I use their technology um, we just hired our first, like, I guess it would be John training and standards. It was really an internal promotion. And this is actually a conversation we've been having in the last six months, which is part of the reason we're with spot, I would say is really focusing on which technology do we actually need and which one's going to work synergistically with the other ones. Cause there's so much stuff out there, right? When you end up like doing an app list of what you're using to run your business and there's 20 different things on there. And I think as an industry, at least what I've seen when I go to the shows as well, is a lot of these big boys that are consolidating everything have this same vision. Like everything's in one house and they kind of control the data, they control the information, everything's in one place, which I'm not sure how healthy that is either. Um, so it's a constant change. And I, you know, I think new stuff comes to market like Spot, which is super focused on, I mean, you're not new, but for this vertical, it's fairly new, I think, when it comes to car washing um, and if it makes sense and it's going to scale and it makes our life easier, um, then we're willing to adopt and move to it fairly quickly. Um, so uh, I don't know if that answers the question, but I mean, technology, we're not getting away from technology and I'm not sure it's making our lives easier. Um, but it's there. (laughs) So some are making it easier. (laughs) So we appreciate it. And, you know, I think for our perspective, we've really, it's been great working with, uh, you know, uh, leaders like you in the car wash industry, because uh, we not just get to make an impact, but also get a lot of feedback, which helps us improve the product all the time. Uh, and and you know, there, there's just a lot of uh, need out there that that we want a service, and you know, we think video can be used for many many different things. And you know, we're just really just starting. We, we, we're still early in that journey, and we're really excited to to work with you all. Uh, really appreciate the comments, and uh, you know, I, I want to throw it open to questions. I know we're just upon time. Uh, but, uh, you know, if folks have any questions for, 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 for Tyler, for Jason, for John, for me, uh, we're all yours.
I guess these questions are coming through the chat, right? Yes. Okay, I see a few people typing. Yeah, I would say, too, for any of you that are on the call that um, may be kind of skittish towards spot due to a lot of a lot of people being burned by camera systems over the years, um, they offer a 30-day free trial, no strings attached. So, you know, you can get the system, install it. If you don't like it, you can return it. Um, and I don't know that it gets any easier than that to try a camera system out. No, we appreciate that for sure. Uh, uh, so Laurie has a question, which is, uh, I think, maybe for, for John, um, specific examples of how you use Spot for training purposes. Yeah. So, for example, they have their intelligence um, section where you can um, uh, be – they have, like, an idle time option. So, um, for our pay stations, um, we can I, – I alluded to this a little bit earlier – so a current thing right now we're working on with our site managers and assistant managers is that um, we have um, uh, our cameras on our pay stations and through spot, it can analyze the, basically I want to know, I want to have a list of all the transaction, the cars that sat at the pay station longer than five minutes um, because uh, it, it's specifically showing that either that person, it's always usually new people and they're sitting there too long trying to solve things. And it's never a situation where they're by themselves or like the customers, there's always an employee out there. Um, but that's, that's probably the biggest thing we're working on right now is, Hey, this employee sat there trying to help this person for 12 minutes or whatever. And like, let's, let's do some training with this employee of like, what was, what was the problem? How can we help them pull them out of the bailout lane, get them out of the way so that way it's clogging our throughput. So that's one of the situations specifically that's very helpful um, that we are using. on. John, John, I would also say too, that, um, you know, uh, as Jason had said about the, you know, the Gen Z employees, videos are everything to them and you can try all you want with, with writing and, things like that inside our training manual. But when you can show a video of things they're supposed to do or not to do or how certain processes will work, um, that's more of a hands-on learning experience to them. And the videos serve us well. Being able to easily pull up other sites too, like when, you know, they just don't believe you and you're like, well, they're doing it at the other site. Let's watch that. And you can pull it up and show it real quick. Um, we use the AI feature more in the prep area. Um, and it's, it's a pretty good spot check to be able to walk, walk in and pull up that AI feature and say, hey, let's do it by time. So in John's case, it would be at the kiosk. And I look at, hey, why is this one five minutes? And then you start going down the list to the end. And when they start getting below a minute, I'm not too concerned about it, um, depending on the time of year and what their prep requirement is. But you can quickly go in and see what were our worst case for the day and then sort of triage from there from a training perspective. Um, I think this this the spot the AI feature seems to be getting better and better too. Like it's it's when it first came out, it was all how you set it up. But as we get more efficient at setting it up, it becomes more valuable to us as well. Um, and I think I tend to have a bigger vision of how it's going to be used than they actually do use it. <laughs> but I'm hoping that we get to where like at the shift captain level, they're they're using it more effectively um, as the system continues to get better. So. And Jason, you know, another question there related is, uh, you know, uh, the one thing that we've seen a lot of folks in the car wash industry like you like is our, the cases feature where you guys collaborate around, you know, these video clips. Uh, maybe you can talk a bit about, you know, how you guys do that. And you know. Yeah, I love that feature because uh, as much as we hate to admit it, incident claims are a huge part of our business and they're no fun. And so for a new employee that's dealing with the really no fun part when the customer's pissed off and they think it's your fault, whatever. Um, we just kind of take it off of them say, Hey, you just got to get the video clip. You got to build the storyboard and then escalate it. Uh, don't get into it with the customer. Don't fight with them, whatever. And so, but by the time it gets to my level to make a decision on it, it's super efficient. And in many cases I'm finding they're actually taking care of more stuff up front because they're able to quickly find that clip, quickly share it with a customer and be like, Hey, it was like that when you came in. Um, and then I don't even see them. So I'm seeing a lot less decision making at my level because they're able to take care of it and, and sort of figure it out on their own before it gets to me. 
Yeah, I like the I like the tag part of the cases because I, I don't get involved in too many of the, the damage claims unless they're over a set amount that we have. But the ones I do have to get involved in, John or Aaron or the site managers can tag me and I can look through the video and give my decision real quick and type it out and it goes out from there. So that's pretty nice. And then um, I think Paul had asked about uh, uh, Titus asked about how many camera systems – Many camera systems I've used in the past in the tunnel never last long due to water damage. What are you guys seeing? So we, um, we've we had spot for, I guess, a little over a year, right out of year. Yeah. Um, the, camera, the cameras are free. So what we're actually doing now, um, we're just replacing the tunnel cameras as needed. I would say they're holding up probably six or eight months. But if they get any moisture in them, we can't get out. We just replace them. Uh, the, the cameras are free with your contract. So it's and they're basically plug and play to replace them. I, so uh, it's not that I, big of a deal. I think so far we've only had to replace two spot cameras due to damage. So they, they hold up pretty well. So. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're a different environment up here, obviously. I mean, I, it was 15 below the other day and now we got to put a new snow. And when you open the doors to our tunnels, we have to wear uh reflective vest. The preppers um, as the cars are coming in. So it's a totally different environment when it comes to difficult, the camera, uh, I guess, you know, creating a difficult environment for the cameras to continue working. <laughs> and so when we transitioned to spot, we didn't have to change our tunnel cameras uh, initially. We just put them on your server. And then as they go bad, we just swap them out. And like Tyler was saying, that was the biggest reason that we switched was that cameras are part of the contract and they're all plug and play. And we have a couple on the shelf ready to go. And when we, we definitely have two or three cameras a year per tunnel that'll just, you know, get worn out from the, the amount of exposure they have to the environment. And we're, we're back up in a day where it used to be we had to order a new camera, we had a setting set, and then we had to plug it in and no pileups was down in that section for, you know, a couple of weeks. If no pileups is down for more than 12 hours, I'm like, what's wrong, guys? What, what's the problem? It's not that hard. Yeah, I think too with the the plug and play part with the cameras is we we don't need our IT guy to come in and reset IP addresses and crap on the cameras anymore. You plug them in and you hit a button in the settings and the camera comes back up. Um, you know that's time. Yeah. And I think that's to include no pileups, right? Like we're not having to even call no pileups. It just works. Yeah. Uh, for the most part, as long as the box is aligned, yeah, it does. And then uh, someone had just asked about storage capabilities. Uh, we do thirty days at our sites. That's all we need, but. I think spot does up to 90, right? So that's right. Yes, you can yeah. customers can choose up to 36 and 90. So this is 24-7 local storage. Um, and you can also store as many clips as you want in the cloud. So if you save particular clips for a claim or for training purposes, those get saved forever as long as you want them. That's what I was gonna say. We don't I don't I think we're at 32, but really I want those instant claim storyboards built within 24 hours. And once that's built, it's saved forever. Yeah, and and Jeremy was asking earlier too. We do we were talking about training other things. We do like the cases feature is really uh, amazing. That helps us with the training. It helps us. That's how we can save everything. We can we can put um, uh, you can put annotations and put spots exactly. Jump right to the footage. You can put notes. You can comment on it. You can um, tag. So this is something I'm going to start. Um, like they have tags on the videos, which are on the cases. I haven't, we're going to start rolling this out probably next month that they help us track like, Hey, if this is a wiper, so type in wiper. And then we can start analyzing our data of like how many incident reports are due to this or that. And I think that's super helpful. Um, uh, and it's extremely easy to, you can text and email text or email, um, uh, footage or pictures straight from the software, which is very helpful. Um, yeah. So something that's just extremely, uh, and again, I would say this too is, is that I feel like it's so different than what it was a year ago. Um, when we came on board, like the growth and change and the cases look better, like the cameras have improved. So I think what you've had, this is since uh, we came on board, you're now on your, you've improved the, an update of the cameras twice, I think, the physical cameras. So just little things I think are really helpful. 
yeah, no, you know, building on that, uh, the one thing I'll point for everybody is that we take customer feedback very seriously. We've in the last, we launch a new feature on average once every two weeks. Uh, so in the last uh, couple of years, you've had about 50 new features. So the product is evolving a lot. And uh, the way we like to think about it is that you're getting an appreciating asset uh, where, you know, the product that you get on day one is not the same as product you get in six months. It's better. And then in our six months after that, it's a whole lot better. Uh, so, and, and, you know, we, we pride ourselves on that velocity of, of, of innovation. I think to ju jump on what John was saying there too, like the decision-making time for owners and managers is a fraction of what it was with our previous system because of that ability to build that case. Even at the, if the employee at the base level saying, Hey, I have a question. I'm like, Hey, just shoot me the, the text link. I look at it real quick and let him know. And then he continues building his storyboard. Um, it's not, it used to be, I would download a file, it would be in Dropbox, I'd have to go find it and look at it and then go back and ask more questions because they didn't build it. Now it's like, if I have to think more than 30 seconds on that case, then you didn't build it right, go rebuild it. I really appreciate that perspective. Um, uh, I think there's one question, which was about quality of cameras for inspections. Uh, uh, Tyler, John or Jason, if one of you want to take that. Yeah, I think. I think right now, I think the resolution we get is uh, 1620, I think. Is that right? It's either 1620 or 1660. It's whatever that. So, again, better than what we were using before. No, it's not like an 8K camera, but honestly, for our inspection arch, we don't even need that. It's, um, I don't, the, yeah, so, again, everything the quality of the, I don't, the cameras are great. So I don't have a problem. And again, I, I'm hearing that this, our newest site's going to get the newer, newer cameras. I don't, I don't think they're, you know, light years beyond what we currently have, but we don't even have the newest stuff out yet at our site. So, which is, which is great. That's outstanding. I love that. So. I think uh, our previous system had higher quality cameras, but all of it was stored on site. Um, and I don't going back to John, like I, I don't, I don't need that quality. Like I'm not going to zoom in on a, you know, scratch claim that I know physically didn't happen at the car wash and look for the, it was almost, it's almost worse if I can get in so close and say, Hey, see, uh, here it is. Cause inevitably I can't. Um, for some of those super micro scratches that you just know aren't car wash scratches and you, you have, you're coming at it from more of a physics standpoint than you are a, a camera standpoint. Um, and, you know, I'm looking at stuff that's falling off or was damaged beforehand. When it gets into like micro scratches, I, that's the only thing I can think of that I would be searching for on a 4K camera. And I, I really still couldn't find it to the degree that I needed. And so when I'm zooming in and saying, hey, I can't even read your plates, like this isn't these aren't car wash scratches, you know, that, that has value too. So. Um, I want to just answer Anthony's question. Um, yeah. So the MBRs, like we have the older MBRs and um, there's new IVRs coming are coming out. All the new sites are getting them updated capabilities. So we're going to be installing those here soon. We're excited about that. It's going to be able to uh, keep up to date with the new, the, all those new um, features they're running out, they're they're pushing out. Like one of those is uh, license plate recognition. So like being able to find vehicles and incidents by the license plates. So um, we don't ha we're not using that just yet because we have to adjust some cameras first before we do. But we have the capabilities in our system. We just our cameras aren't quite placed. We gotta place them in the right spot. So yeah, we have the new IVR systems and they're good. And, and to kind of add to that for everybody, you know, we when we design these systems, we're uh, really future proofing them. So when it, whenever we launch a new IVR, it has the latest GPUs and, you know, we stuff them with it. So uh, so that it can, you know, it has a lot of headroom in terms of new capabilities. Uh, and then we're constantly releasing that. And, you know, I know we're, we're quite over time, but I'll add, uh, it kind of links to one question that somebody asked before, which was, what's, uh, you know, what's the next big thing for us? Um, I don't want to, you know, spoil too much of the fun, but I'll talk a bit about the three areas that we're really focused on from a product perspective. I think one is deepening our AI capabilities and making those alerts more useful so that you can instantly surface and resolve problems in your business. 
Um, the second area that we're really focusing on is the intelligence dashboards and making those more industry specific and useful to the different operators in your business. And a third area where we focus on is integrations and, you know, allowing you to, you know, use video and other systems. And, you know, particularly for a larger organization, uh, you already have a bunch of existing systems that you need to work with. Uh, so making sure that we can support that. Um, Sean, thank you for the comments and thank you everyone again for all the questions. We really appreciate the engagement and, you know, most importantly, thank you so much to Tyler, to John and to Jason for taking out the time from your busy days to, uh, uh, you know, talk a bit about your experience and, uh, and, and how uh, you, uh, you know, you, you're able to use the product, um, you know, and for folks on the call, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to us and we can answer them async and, you know, if, we, if you're interested in a free trial, as Tyler said, you know, we offer them for free. Uh, you can, you know, try it before you buy it. Uh, please get in touch and, you know, uh, somebody will, you know, reach out to you pretty shortly. Uh, Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank you for your Bye. time. See ya. Thank you. Bye.